This woman thumbed her nose at the law and suffered the consequences for failing to obey the officer. When a sinner refuses to obey the gospel, he's thumbing his nose at God's law, not realizing that there'll be terrifying consequences. This is Anthony, a nice guy who listened to the gospel but didn't show any desire to repent and trust Christ. He even begins making excuses near the end. Listen to Romans 2 verses 8 to 12. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, in other words, the handcuffs will be coming on, and this is what they'll get, quote, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man who does evil of the Jew first and also of the Greek. For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. In such cases, and there are many, all we can do is pray and plead with them in the hope they'll come to their senses. Do you think there's an afterlife? <sighs> Somewhat. Somewhat's, uh, sometimes reincarnation, sometimes uh, heaven, depends on how I'm feeling. Depends on your day? Yeah, actually. <laughs> Let me give you a scenario. Are you an educated person? I like to think so. Are you well read? I believe so. What's the world's biggest seller of all time? Book. The Bible, right? Okay, now you're familiar with the story of the rich young ruler that ran to Jesus, knelt down and said, Good master, what should I do to inherit eternal life? How would you answer that question? Let me, let me coagulate the whole thought for you. Give you a scenario. You feel under your arm there's a lump and it really hurts. So you go to the doctor and say, Doctor, I've got this lump, it really hurts. And he says, Boy, that looks serious. He goes away, does some tests, comes back, and he says, that's lymph node cancer, and it's metastasized. I'm so sorry to tell you this, but you've got two weeks to live. I'll give you some drugs to help the pain, but I'm so sorry. So you go home, you lay in your bed, you're nauseated. The drugs are making you feel sick as a dog. They've got a terrible side effects. You don't feel like being with anybody. All you can think about is that question, what should I do to inherit eternal life? So how would you answer that question? More than 600,000 Americans will die of cancer in the next year, 8.2 million worldwide, so it's not a far out scenario, it could happen to you. I mean, when your time comes, your time comes. Uh, am I scared of what waits after death? Or am I worried about it? No, it is what it is. And what is it? it we you don't even know, know what it is. Nobody knows. No, you don't know, but you can't say nobody knows. I know, I've got the greatest authority on the earth telling me exactly what happens after death. So you've got no answer to the question, what should I do to adhere eternal life? Well, if you follow the good book, you know, um, not that I would know what to do. Uh, I haven't read it, but... Uh, well, let me tell you what Jesus said to that young man that asked the question. He said, you know the commandments, and then he gave him five of the ten commandments. Do you know why he did that? Only five, no. Well, it's to show him God's standard, the standard he's going to be judged by. Are you familiar with the commandments? I am. Can you name five? Uh, probably. Uh, don't cover, covet your neighbor's, neighbor's wife. Don't steal and murder. Uh, uh, so let me run them by you. Let me hold them up as a mirror so you can see yourself. Do you think you're a good person? No. So you're a sinful person? All the time. You're doing things that are morally wrong? Yeah. Do you think God's angry at you? If there is one, uh, he's forgiving, so. No, is he angry at you? Angry? Uh -oh. So let me back up and do, let the commandments do their work. So how many lies do you think you've told in your life? Too many to count. Ever stolen something? Yes. So you're a lying thief? All the time. Wow. <laughs> I, better, so no, I better watch my wallet. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Do you realize what you're doing when you do that? Blasphemy. Well, you're taking the name of God and using it as a cuss word. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? Not that I haven't, but... Uh, you've, used your, 
Is your mother's name is a cuss word? Well, you've just broken the fifth commandment. Well, I believe I called my brother a son of a... Oh. So you called your mother a female dog. Uh, Boy, that's heavy. So, at the moment, your conscience should be sending out an alarm. It is. That's why I'm okay with dying. It's not. Well, you shouldn't be. Now, let's keep him going. You've blasphemed. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Every second. Have you had sex before marriage? Yes. Anthony, I'm not judging you. You've just told me you're a lying, thieving blaspheming, fornicator, a daughter at heart who's dishonored his mother and broken the fifth commandment. So if God judges you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at six. On Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty? Oh, yeah. Guilty. Heaven or hell? Ooh. Shall I be forgiven? That's the question. But uh, probably end up in hell. Now, does that concern you? It is what it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> it doesn't have to be what it is. You know, God's rich in mercy. He doesn't take any pleasure in your death. You know, God's given you the death sentence. That's how serious sin is. The wages of sin is death. You've got the, uh, you've got the wrath of God abiding upon you. The Bible says you're an enemy of God in your mind through wicked works, blaspheming the name of the God who gave you life. But the Bible says God is rich in mercy and he provided a savior so you wouldn't have to go to hell. Do you understand what Jesus did on the cross? Uh, he suffocated. Well, yeah, yeah. that's, that's the... Is that dying for our sins or what are you... Yeah, look, the Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. It's as simple as that. That's why he called out, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. If you're in court and you're guilty, the judge can let you go if someone else pays your fine. He can say... Anthony, there's a stack of speeding fines here. You're guilty, but someone's paid them. You're out of here. And he can do that which is legal and just. Well, God can legally forgive your sins, commute your death sentence, dismiss your case, let you live forever because of what Jesus did on the cross through his death and resurrection. He can legally let you live. You don't have to come under the wrath of his law because he's rich in mercy. What you have to do is repent and trust in Christ. Repentance is an old word. It just means to confess and forsake your sins. Don't play the hypocrite. If you're going to name the name of Christ, apart from iniquity. Don't say, I'm a Christian and feed your heart on pornography and commit adultery and lie and steal and blaspheme. You let go of those sins, but that won't save you. What will save you is faith in Jesus. It's like trusting a parachute. A parachute will save you if you put your faith in it. Jump without a parachute, that's fearful. That's why I'm terrified of you dying in your sins. It's like jumping without a parachute. You know you're going to hit the ground on your face 120 miles an hour. That's terrifying. But trust in a parachute, you're going to hit the ground at 8 miles an hour and land on your feet. You are saved from gravity. And the moment you trust in Christ, God says he'll remit your sins. He will justify you. He'll cleanse you, forgive you, lay righteousness upon you. So on the day of judgment, you'll be clean in his sight and not come under his wrath. Does that make sense? I mean, that what you're saying makes sense, yes. Anthony, you don't realize this, but I love you. I care about you. And that's why I'm saying these harsh things to you. And so I'm trying to get you to... Realize you need to trust in the Savior, trust in Christ, listen to the gospel, believe it, appropriate it, and you'll pass from death to life. You've got God's promise on it. Will you think about what we talked about? Well, what do you want to think? Well, I mean, well, this is all what I want from you. I want you to repent and trust Christ. I want you to put the parachute on. I don't want you to go for another minute with your eternity looming in front of you because death could seize upon you today. Death is the arresting officer that's going to drag you before the judge of the universe for violating his law. And I'd hate that to happen to you. You're a human being. You're not a dog. God promises a brand new body to all those that trust in him. The Bible says the meek will inherit the earth. We're going to get this earth without the curse. No earthquakes, floods, diseases, pain, suffering, or death. When the lion and the wolf will lie together. Pleasure forevermore. That, that's what God promises. Or damnation. Be treated justly for your sins. So pleading with you please think about these things think about your eternity think about the fact you could die today and it's all over you're damned what a terrible thing so what do you think about it well, who's it terrible for i mean that's if you believe you know no it's got nothing I mean, you're saying that this person this entity definitely exists and his name is god but there's there plenty of other entities out there in other religions i mean let me address that question we know God exists because of creation. No building 
didn't have a builder. No painting didn't have a painter. Every painting is proof of a painter. Every building is proof of a builder. And creation is proof of the creator. Flowers, birds, trees, sun, moon, stars, the seasons, fruits. You might be broken down into science, though. You've seen um, how pi fits into a lot of, of life. Uh, yeah, it's very complex. It is. And the other thing is that you know God demands morality. You've got a conscience, a God-given conscience. Society shaped, but God-given. So you know what I'm saying is true because your conscience affirms the truth of the commandment. So, Anthony, please think about these things. That's all I'm asking. Just go away from here and consider it. Consider your salvation. Consider the fact you could die today. Consider what God did on the cross. Think about your own sins and how if God brings them all out on Judgment Day, you're going to be justly damned, and that horrifies me. So will you please think about these things? It can be done. Hey, thanks for listening to me. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you.